Hi. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to set up authentication in ASP.NET MVC6. Um, to get started, you need to have either a local SQL Server database or an Azure database up and running. Um, you have to be able to write to this database and you have to know the connection string to it. When finished, I'll have your typical application where you can create a user, modify user, change your password, um, authenticate your email via or your username via email. All right, so I'm going to start with my new project. We're going to create an MVC app as typical. Give it a good name. Now here's the first place that's different. Pick, indivi pick individual accounts. When it creates, I'm going to let it chug. Okay, so once it's installed, you need to make sure you have Entity Framework installed. If you've been working on this for a while, you probably already have them installed, but you need Entity Framework Core, Any Framework Core SQL Server, and Any Framework Core Tools. These were installed for you when you checked on using the identity, and that's what this is. Identity is Microsoft's authentication protocol. So make sure that they're in, which they are. All right, so now we're going to have to run your scaffolding tool to get your output. And you go down here to your package manager console. And you're going to run this command. Scaffold DB context, server, whatever your connection string is, um, the provider, Microsoft Entity Framework Core SQL Server, and then output directory models. All right, so after the command runs, you get warned you have to protect your connection string. Currently, your connection string is in the name of your database. Oops. Model. Your name of database context. So delete this. We're going to take it from here and we're going to put the connection string into your app settings. Now, actually, before you do this, copy your connection string so you don't have to retype it. So delete this out of here, save your project, and then go to app settings.json. You're going to put your connection string in right here. All right, so at this point, let's see what we have. Run your program and give it a minute to get caught up. All right, so notice now we have a register and a login page. Let's try to register. I use my school account. The password does require some complexities, at least one capital letter and one number. So if I hit register at this point, it should crash me. The reason is we have migrated this. So we're going to apply these migrations right here. If this command fails, you can run these two down here as well. Okay, so refresh. All right, so the email is there. Um, we're going to configure an email sender here in a few minutes. But right now, I'm going to click here to confirm my accounts. And I'm going to take a look at my SQL Server database. Here's my database before I ran the command. I refresh. Maybe. Hey, when you hit the wrong button, you have to pause. Okay, so after the pause, these new tables are generated. These ASP net user tenant tables are generated by identity. This was the migration when you click the button. When I take a look at ASP net users, it helping me. I execute that. Here's my username. See it's hashed. Email confirmed is in here. 
that was when I clicked the button. If you have trouble with email sending or someone can't access, you can just come back in and change that zero to a one. Everything else is reasonably well hashed. All right. This becomes my username and password. This becomes my username. This becomes the ID that you use internally. But this is built for you with identity. Okay, so I'm going to log in. Log in, and I'm in. It tells me who I am. I can log out. I can log in again. I can send emails. I can do all sorts of stuff. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to modify my project so that I have some additional data here to work on. So I'm going to add in links to my database with authors and allow us to edit and change this. All right, so I'm going to add in a table for authors. Um, this is already my database. You want to make sure that there's a primary key in here. So I had to add in system component model data annotations and I add the annotation key here above my primary key. If you're not sure what a primary key is, take a database class. Um, I'm going to add my controller here. Right click, add controller. I'm going to pick MVC controller views as the entity framework. Now, this step I'm doing right now is not critical for identity, but it's become useful later on. We Turn some roles. So I pick author. Your data context class needs to be this application DB context. That's a connection to the database, including authorization. So I pick this one. Um, I'm using my layout page. I've had some issues with layout pages not applying, so I'm forcibly putting in there. I'm going to add. I'm going to let it chug and do its thing. All right, so my author's controller and my views are all created. Um, if you're not sure how this is working, I have another video up that demonstrates this process of connecting to an Azure database. So take a look at that when you get a chance. So I'm going to run this, and what should appear now, I should have a link up a menu bar to authors, and I should be able to click on authors and see my list of authors. There they are. All right, so at this point, I have full access to these. I can edit, delete, whatever I want to do. I can create new authors. Um, I need to protect that. Um, I also need to make sure that my users um, are emailed whenever they create an account and change. So that's where we're moving next. We're going to get the username to be um, emailed to the user when they log in. All right, to do so, I configured an account with SendGrid. And I'll let you guys figure that out. But if you create an account with SendGrid, and they have a free plan that gives you 100 emails a day, which is plenty if you're learning how to get this to work. Um, you have to configure your account with SendGrid, and you have to create a sender ID. Totally free, doesn't need a credit card, piece of cake. Um, I, so SendGrid, you're going to have to create, as I said, a sender ID and set up the API. It's all free. The website will walk you through it. Now, I got this information from this Microsoft page, account confirmation and password recovery in ASP.NET Core. Um, it takes about, like I said, about 17 minutes to read this and it'll walk you through the creation of all of this code. Once you get your key, you're going to get a super secret key. You're going to need to, back in Visual Studio Code in the project management, you're going to need to do a You're going to have to set your secret key here, then for minus the name of your project. When you enter that, it'll put your super secret API key that you get from SendGrid into a storage on your local box. Um, this particular storage will allow you to run this key locally. It won't allow you to run it up off of Azure. You'll have to make a change there. So I'm going to make mine run. Okay, so once you've configured that super secret key, you're now ready to set up your email provider through SendGrid and ASP.NET. So again, we're going to go back to this website. And we're going to basically do everything it says here. Now, I've already created the accounts. Um, you start by creating this file. Services, auth message, sender options. I'm just going to copy. Now, services don't have, so I'm going to create a folder for that. So I'm going to add a folder. 
I'm going to call it services. And inside of services, as this site says, I'm going to create a new class called auth message sender options. And I'll put my code in there. All right, so this creates the services for us. Um, we're then going to continue on this website. And I just did this configure send grid user secrets, so that's done. Um, it tells you about where it's stored and how to find it. Um, we're now going to install SendGrid into our project. And they have us doing it from the PowerShell command prompt. And so the command is install package. Um, if you don't like doing it from here, you can also have done it from... The package manager it's up here as well now it's installed so it works either way the, the on site just gave you the command to do it okay so we have it installed and now we need implement email sender now this is the exact code we need in a file called email senders um, the only thing that's going to change is this email address instead of whoever this person is it's going to be the email address that you configured your send grid with. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to create a file called email senders.cs. It's a new code file. So I pasted it in there. Now it's angry about me meth about this message sender options. I need to make a couple quick adjustments. I need to add services in there. This allows off message sender options to be understood. And then further down, I need to find Joe at Contoso. Contoso is one of Microsoft's training domains. You put in whatever user, whatever email accounts you configured in SendGrid. And then password recovery is just an entrance. What's going on here was, or the subject matter. Whatever you put in as a subject will be the subject appears on the person's email. All right, so save it. Let's see what happens. Who did I create last time? Let's see what username I already have. I have Catrolli PT College. Just created one for Gmail. So I'll create a register. When you do this for learning, I suggest sticking with the same password throughout here. Um, otherwise, you'll go insane trying to remember what the usernames and passwords were. Hmm, that should have worked. Let me figure out what I did wrong. I forgot to configure this to support the email. So I'm going to um, delete that account I just created. So that way I can put it again. This will allow me to rebuild this again later. You have complete control over this as long as you have access to the database. If you don't have access to the database, it makes it much more difficult. 
So we need to add these items into our project. Well, it tells me to go to program CS. I'll put this off screen so I can watch it. So we need to add some usings. So we added Microsoft ASP Net Core Identity UI Services. We have to add in our class we created. And then we need to add in two email senders. So I added it here above my ad builds. Okay, so I figured out what was wrong. I had I email sender here instead of email sender. Okay, so let's run it, see that it works. And I'll send an email message to my Gmail account. This will come in as spam. You'll have to identify this as not spam. Register. It says, don't say check my email. So I do a refresh. Here it is. Welcome to ASP.NET authorization. And I'll click here. And I'm confirmed. And I can log in. Beautiful. All right. Um, in my next video, I'm going to demonstrate how to stop unauthorized users from accessing my authors list. Um, thanks for watching. Um, good luck to you.